All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. On this page of notes, we're going to take a look at quadratic inequalities. We are gonna start example one with you doing a little bit of practice, a little bit of review. So I'm gonna pause the video, let you complete the graphs for example 1a and 1b, and then we'll restart it and talk about your graphs and go from there. All right, let's take a look at the graphs that I've put here and you can compare these to yours. The first thing that I noticed on this first one is that it was factorable. Since it was factorable, it allowed me to get my x-intercepts very easily. And when we're working with our quadratic inequalities, it's really important to get those x-intercepts. The next thing that I did, as you can see, I actually wrote out the arithmetic here. I was trying to find where the x-coordinate of my vertex is. You can maybe visualize it right here, but really what I was doing was the average. So of these intercepts, so that got me an x-coordinate of 2. I evaluated my function at 2, and that got me at a negative 16. So I can see that the vertex of my graph is actually going to be off the grid that I've provided, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. What really matters to us is these x-intercepts and then the direction of the opening for our graph. On example 1b, the first thing that I noticed is that I could factor out this negative x, Factoring that out, again, gave me my intercepts. This one was really easy to see where the x-coordinate of the vertex is supposed to be, so I did that quick computation, got my vertex, and just as I expected from my graph with this leading coefficient of negative, when I plot those intercepts and I plot that vertex, I have a downward turning parabola, which is exactly what we needed. Now, we're gonna use these graphs in our examples down below. Just like I had in one of my other videos, some of my things just aren't converting properly to the PDF form. So we've got a couple inequalities that we need to fill in here. On example 2a, before we get too far, we're gonna go ahead and fill this in as a greater than or equal to. And on example 3b, that's also going to be a greater than or equal to sign. So we want to get that filled in. I don't want to cover up that negative. So we're going to have our greater than or equal to on that one as well. Now from here, what we can do is we can start diving into this analysis. If we look at example 2a, you can see that this is the exact same quadratic as we have up here in example 1a, except for instead of it being an equality, I have an inequality here. So what this is asking me to determine is where is this function more than zero? In other words, where is this graph above the x-axis? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this two different ways. We're gonna first take a look at our graph up above and we'll get an answer and then we're gonna confirm that with, some, with an algebraic test. If I look up above, I can see that my graph is above the x-axis here and here. So the x values that give me those regions of my curve are negative infinity to the x-intercept and the x-intercept to positive infinity. So we're going to go ahead and write those answers and then we'll confirm why that is true. So we know that the answer we're expecting is a negative infinity to that x-intercept of a negative 2. It's an equality, so I'm going to have my inclusive and then I'm going to restart at my other intercept of a 6 and I'm going to go to positive infinity. So this is the answer that we are looking to achieve, and we're going to test this algebraically as well. Now, algebraically, what we would do is we would put this in its factored form, as we have up above, x minus 6, and I have my x plus 2, and it's greater than or equal to 0. I can put these on my number line, put my negative infinity and my positive infinity, I can put my negative 2 and my 6. I'm going to give myself solid dots because this is inclusive. And then what I can do is I can just choose values from each interval and test them. So if I choose a value from this interval here, let's say negative 2 if, or negative 3, if I choose a negative 3 and I start to evaluate this, what I find is that a negative 3 minus 6 is going to give me a negative number, and a negative 3 plus a 2 is a negative number. So my negative times my negative is a positive, so this interval will, in fact, 
make my equality true, my inequality true. Now, when I choose something from this middle interval, I would choose zero, and I can plug that into the non-factored form. And when I plug a zero into my non-factored form, I get negative 12 greater than zero. Well, that's clearly untrue, so this section of the number line would get rejected. Continuing on, I can choose a seven, so I'm working with my last interval. If I choose my seven, put my seven into my factored form, seven minus six is positive, seven plus two is positive, and of course, positive times positive is positive. So what we can see here is that this interval of numbers and this interval of numbers matches exactly what we expected from our graphical representation. I can do my remaining example with the same graph, and we, if we want, we could do that, test that number line as well. So we're going to put our values on our number line. Slide this up a little bit for us. We're going to put our values on our number line just like we did before. Same numbers because the function hasn't changed. Still have a negative infinity, still have a positive infinity. This time I'm going to make these open because I can see from my problem that it is not inclusive this time. And when I test these algebraically, I will now get an untrue statement in some of my spots. So negative three. So if I put my negative three into my function, I'm going to work with my already factored form written above. My negative three minus six, as we found before, is of course a negative. Negative three plus two is negative. And a negative times negative is positive. So now I'm having a positive number, and positive numbers are not less than zero. So now my section of the graph that's going to get rejected is the outside. When I choose my number in the middle, I'm going to get a negative 12 is less than zero. That's most definitely true. So now this becomes my acceptable range. And I could continue testing, and this one would fail. So this problem tells me that my final answer should be, open parentheses because of my open circle, negative 2 to 6. Now we can confirm this with our graph up above. So up above, we, we're, we can see from our problem we're looking where it's less than 0. And on our graph up above, we can see that our graph is below 0 right here. So it would be this set of x values. And that's exactly what we wrote here. So we're just going to repeat this process on the next problem. Again, it's the same as the one that we have up above, so we can use that factored form. What makes this one a little more challenging is that my variables are on the right-hand side of the inequality sign. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just write this in its factored form. Factor out that negative. I have my x plus my 4, same as up above. If I want, I can even rewrite it on the next problem just so that I've got it in both places. If that's useful for you, we can rewrite it in both places. Now we can predict what we want it to be by looking at our graph up above. So we can, on this one, on our example 3a, we're looking for where are these values, we always read from the variable, greater than zero. So graphically, I'm looking for it to be this portion right here, which means it should be the values between the intercepts. Let's check that algebraically and see if that remains true. Should work, same conclusion no matter what approach you take. So I'm going to put my values on my number line again. I'm going to give these open circles because it's not inclusive, and then I'm going to test. So if I pick, let's say, negative 5, if I put a negative 5 in here, I'm going to get a positive 5 because a negative times my negative, that's going to give me a positive. And my negative 5 plus my 4 is also going to give me a negative. So now I can see that I have negative values on this right-hand side, and that's not going to be more than 0. Now, I prefer to solve these graphically, but you might like this algebraic approach, and you're welcome to use it. Continuing my testing of my intervals and determining what's true and what's not, if we continue testing, 
our middle interval would be true and our, our the outer interval would be false. So sure enough, we get the exact same answer as we expected from our graph, negative four to zero, parentheses, because this is not inclusive. We've got one more that we can do here related to these graphs that we've already done. Now we're looking where the values are less than zero, so we're expecting these to flip. You can see it from the graph that this is where the graph is below zero. And if you would like to test these out, you can, again, you would simply put them on the number line with your negative four and your zero. We're gonna use solid dots because the inequality is inclusive this time. And when you test these, if you want, you can pause it and just test them out. And what you should get when you test them is you should get that the outer sides give you true statements, the middle is gonna fail this time. So when we write our final answer, we'll do our negative infinity to our negative four, remember to use brackets, union, restart at the next intercept, zero to positive infinity. So if you wanna test those out algebraically, you can. All right, we're gonna look at just one more example here that we can solve both graphically and algebraically. Again, it's really important that you understand how these link together. So what we're first gonna do is do this graphically. So we're gonna graph our two functions. The first one I'm gonna graph is this parabola. This one, we don't even need to make a t-chart. We can just do this one just by inspection. We can tell it's an upward turning parabola that's been shifted down four. We can easily find those intercepts mentally. So we can put this graph in here very quickly. The next thing that we're gonna do is we can graph our line. And when we graph our line, we can see that it has an, a, a y-intercept of two and a slope of a negative one. So we can just make a couple points here and sketch in this graph. So graphically, what this is wanting us to know and find here is it's wanting us to figure out where is our, and it's good if we kind of color code these here, where is the f of x function, our red function, less than the g of x, which we've identified as the blue. So where is the red graph below the blue graph? And we can see that it's below the blue graph from here all the way to here. So we wanna find these x values. Now these x values are kind of hard to determine if we just look at it algebraic or graphically, but we can estimate where this is. I'm not gonna write the final answer right now because it's a little bit hard, but we're looking for the values from here to here because we give our answers in x's. So let's do it algebraically and then we'll get a more precise answer that way. Now when I do this algebraically, I'm just gonna plug these in. So I'm going to say x squared minus four less than a negative x plus two. This is gonna be easier to solve if we move everything to the left-hand side. So I'll have my x squared plus my x minus my two is less than zero. Sorry about that, I just realized I wrote a two even set a two, and I meant to write a six there, minus a six. Now we can factor this, x plus three and x minus two, less than zero. And then if we think about what this looks like from what we did up above, we can combine our true sketch and our algebraic approach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my intercepts on my number line as my negative three and my positive two. And what I can see is that this quadratic is an upward turning parabola. So I'm going to just imagine an upward turning parabola passing through these intercepts. Now, just thinking of this in terms of a sketch, where is this graph less than zero, so it's right here. So I need to give these values right here as my final answer. So this is what I'm looking for as my final answer. 
It's not supposed to be inclusive, so when I write my final answer, I'm going to say negative 3 to 2, and I'm going to use my parentheses instead of my brackets. And this interval right here does, in fact, appear to match this one. Our graph is just a little bit off because we were not plotting a lot of points, and that's all we've got.